Hi, Mary Luster. Well, hello there. Hi. <laughs> hello. Hello. Hi. It's been a long time. Hi, Miss Brenda. Good afternoon, everyone. How is everyone doing this afternoon? Wonderful. Let me stop Wonderful. sharing Wonderful. my screen so that we can see all of the beautiful faces that we have on this afternoon. Oops. Hello, hello. Hi. I am Tamika Horton, and I am the president of the Metro Atlanta Club. I am so excited to be greeting you all this afternoon for this fantastic program that we are going to have today. While it won't be long and um, we won't have a ton of speakers, we will have a ton of fun. We will hear some stories and experiences from some very um, dynamic sisters that our chair of this program have come to know and heard their stories firsthand. And so they're gonna share them with us today, along with a little bit of fun that we will um, have in there near the end. So I welcome you to uh, this program. I am excited that you are here. Please feel free to engage in the chat to give encouragement to our sisters who have joined us, not just club sisters, but all sisters who have joined us this afternoon. We ask that you will encourage and inspire each other as we listen in and share with one another um, this mm -hmm. afternoon. And if you have any questions, um, also please let us know if you have any technological difficulties, we will try to address those as well um, in the chat as we move forward. So thank you so much for being here. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. We appreciate your participation today and we will move forward with the program at this time. So next we will have a prayer by our TMAC chaplain. Lois Mays, and then our very own chair of the Triple the Pink program, Octavia Taylor, Sister Octavia Taylor, will bring the occasion. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come together. Oh, let's see. We couldn't. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lois. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come together for this program. Let us come with open minds to receive the information being presented. Bless all of our sisters and guests who logged on to hear the information. Bless the presenters. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Sister Octavia, you're still muted. <laughs> yes, it's it's still muted, Sister Octavia. Get unmuted here. Okay, there we go. There now you go. I'm <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us and thinking it was not robbery to be with us this afternoon. We are excited that you're here. We have some very dynamic speakers that are gonna give us information about their survivorship as a breast cancer survivor. They're gonna have a game or two, and of course, a little more information about breast cancer. So again, we're excited that you're here, and we are the committee that has taken this chore, this particular time, which is not a chore, but more of a pleasure. We had a good time getting everything together. So we have Brenda Gibson, Myself, Octavia Evans Taylor. We have Pearlie Robinson, and we also have AJ, but she's missing today. So she's Alice Jackson. I mean, Alice Johnson with her family. So we are excited that all of you have chose to join us, and we are delighted. So we're going to go ahead with our program at this point. And at this time, we'll go back to Tamika.
Okay, so thank you, um, Sister Octavia. So we are going to hear at this time from um, the survivors before we do the scavenger hunt game, so the meat of the program. So Sister Octavia, if you would like to call on um, the first. Um, okay. I'll go ahead and, and start with Sister Brenda Gibson at this time. Okay, well, good. it's good to see all of you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, brother. Uh, pleasure to have all of you join us. And uh, everybody keep talking about the dynamic speakers. I don't know about all of that, but I would like to share my story with you. Um, you know, I had a mammogram in 2019, January 10th. I'll never forget that day because four months after that, I'm, you know, laying around watching television. And I felt, uh, you know, almost talked myself out of doing a self breast exam. You know how you just sit there and you, you know, you're watching TV. It's like, well, you know, this little voice in your head say, well, why don't you just do a self breast exam? And I thought to myself, well, I just had one done, a mammogram done January 10th, just four months ago. So there's no need for that. And a few seconds later, it's, you know, you hear this little voice again. And all of a sudden, I just, you know, how you do your self-breast exam. The first place my hand landed, I felt a little lump there. Felt like a little water blister or something similar to that. And, you know, I had one of those what the heck moments at that time because I had never felt anything like that before. So I um, decided that, well, I need to check this out. But I, I wasn't afraid or anything because I, you know, I do believe in God. And I, I like the uh, Psalm Bible verse 27 and one where it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I didn't think of that in that moment, but that is something that uh, resonates with me all the time. And, you know, to, to just think about going through doing everything that you supposed to do to take care of yourself, which I've always thought to be very healthy, very active, you know, in, in my daily life. So when you come up and, and find out that you may potentially have cancer, because I didn't know it at that time, I was just experiencing, you know, feeling that lump. But um, I did go back to the doctor and they confirmed that, that that's what it was. But it's ironic, though, because the little lump that I felt was not the one that they were concerned about. Mm -hmm. The one that they were, the knot that they were concerned about was deeper into my breast. So I said it was nothing but God to uh, allow me to not overthink what I was thinking and feeling, but to go ahead and examine my stuff. And I, I do say to anyone, know your own body, learn your body. Nobody knows you or your body better than you. If anything should appear out of the ordinary, something you've never seen before, you need to do something about that because nobody really have all the answers to what cancer, you know, where it come from, because they give us so many scenarios eat right, eat a proper diet, exercise, uh, get enough sleep, you know, relax, uh, chemical environment. We know that we live in an environment where so much production is going on. So you have to really, uh, really, really take care of yourself. And this is not just for the ladies, it's for men also. Because even when you go through and have a mammogram, and in my case, you know, 10% uh, of the die, 10% of people uh, get, get, well, it's undiagnosed, even though they go and get a mammogram. It is not detected. That's 10%. So I fell within that 10% realm. But one, one other thing, too, that I would say to anybody, uh, other than going ahead, getting your mammogram, checking for yourself what is going on in your body with your body. Um, to share the information that you have. Don't keep things so secretive, you know, because the little information that you have may help somebody else 
along the way. But I did go through, once they diagnosed me, I went through the chemo for six months, chemotherapy, which is very, you know, it's hard. It is hard. Uh, it can leave a lot of damage to your body. And really, you know, uh, luckily I've come through the chemo, the radiation and the surgery. Um, and I'm cancer free. But I do say this, to have a good team of support people with you and around you will help you get through. I had uh, one of our, my past pastor's wife, Sister Myrna Brown, on the morning of my surgery, she led a, a room of my guests because I had a lot of family and friends there. In fact, Janice was in the hospital that morning when she, my daughter and I walked in. I was surprised. She's sitting in the waiting room and uh, we hadn't even gotten there yet. But um, the support team that you have, people helping you to get through because there's a lot of things that um, you may need or, or uh, help that somebody will offer to you if it's nothing but taking you back and forth to the doctor, getting your medication. Um, I had a very good support team very uh, good. And I said this, that I am cancer free, but I've had a lot of support. I do have some minor side effects, but with the grace of God, I will, you know, that will, uh, I will get over that and get through that too. But if I don't, otherwise I'm, I'm healthy. And another thing too, that I would like to leave with you, always make a journal. You cannot remember everything that's going on with you from one doctor visit to the next. You need to write it down. And for no other reason but for your own self to go back and reflect. I know the, uh, and I'm gonna, I know my time is almost up, but I do know that uh, at the beginning of my, before I went through the training, you have this class that you have to go through. And uh, my son went with me there and he'd take copious notes. I tell you, I had to go back sometime and read his notes so that I would understand and remember what they told me. Uh, and I was in the same meeting with him, but I was busy listening and he was busy writing. So always try, if you can, get someone to go to these appointments with you. And I, I just cannot, I mean, it would take me uh, probably 10 minutes to thank everybody that uh, was in my realm of support, all the people that was there surrounding me, my club sisters, my family members, friends, you know, be at church or just friends. So I am very thankful and very grateful to all the support uh, that I that I received and still are, still are. So that is um, probably all that I have to share, but I do thank you for listening. I thank you for your support. Thank you, BNP. Thank you so much, Brenda. Um, Octavia, if you would unmute, um, then yeah, there you go. Yes, We're there ready. I am. Okay. Um, did Pearlie come on yet? Have you seen her come in, Tamika? She, she is here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, wonderful. We'll go ahead and do Pearlie at this time. Okay. You want to wait, Pearlie? Are you good right now? What, whatever the group needs. Okay, well, you can go ahead. I'm fine. Yeah. We're ready for you. We're ready for you. <laughs> okay. Hello, ladies. I'm sorry I'm late. My name is Pearlie Robinson. It was June 29th in the year 2010, a very bright, sunny day. I left my home for my annual mammogram, this time feeling a bit strange and moving as if I was being carried by some automotive device. I didn't smile as I usually do. I simply went through the steps of preparation. 
When I reached Emory, I took my seat in the usual spot. When my name was called, I glanced up and saw the same technician that hurt me so badly that last time. <laughs> and boy, I wished I had someone else. But I managed to put on my fake smile. I'm pretty good at doing that at times. The tech was not very talkative this time. She just got to work, grabbing and pulling. You know the routine, ladies. Mashing and releasing. And then finally you hear these words. You can get dressed now. I was actually on my way to Thomasville, Georgia to my family reunion. But I did not feel very good about that mammogram this time. Somehow it overshadowed the reunion. It was a very good time, but I was anxious to get back home. And when I did, I ran to the mailbox looking for that Emory envelope and it was there and it said the words that we never want to hear. I let some tears through when I read the results of your exam indicates the need for a follow-up mammographic images and ultrasound exam, the usual thing. But I stopped for a moment to thank God for the premonition I had. Somehow I knew this was different. My husband of 52 years accompanied me to every doctor visit I had. He would sit right outside the door, wait for me to come out, jump up. This time when I came out with the news of cancer, it was different for him. He stumbled, he fell in a chair. What followed was successful surgery, long days, sleepless nights, but unfortunately, on September 11th, 2010, as the world was remembering the victims of the bombing in New York, I sat at home devastated over the loss of my husband who did not recover from the news of my cancer. Mm -hmm. He suffered a massive hemorrhotic stroke and died. Mm -hmm. They found nothing in my lymph nodes, so I didn't have to undergo chemo, but I did have two radiation treatments for five days. Then I started a pill called anestrozole mm -hmm. for five years. How I missed my husband and how I wish I could say this was the end of my story, but it isn't. The cancer returned. And on December 6, 2017, at my direction and not listening to what anybody had to say, I told my doctor to take that breast. I never want to see it again. It took my spouse, you take it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Surgery followed and I started another pill called on December 6th of this year, it will be five years of esmestane. And that's where I am today. My God has brought me, kept me, walked with me, shared every step of the way. I'm so grateful for his mercies and thankful for another chance to see you today to be here, how happy I am that I followed the direction. I got rid of that culprit and I'm here. That's my story. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen, Pearlie. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, 
Curly. At this time, we're going to go ahead and um, have Shekina follow her with her story. Uh, Shekina, are you ready? Yes, ma'am, I am. Okay, thank you. I want to first off, I want to just say that um, it's an honor to be here and I'm so glad that you guys invited me um, to be online and I want to say to Miss Miss Pearlie, um, I'm sorry for the loss of your husband. Um, it's, it's devastating when we lose, you know, our loved ones, family or friends. So, um, but um, yeah, I was diagnosed, this is my second time actually. Um, I was just diagnosed again last year in June. But my first time, um, I was diagnosed with triple negative birth cancer, stage two, um, in June of, uh, well, it was April, April, May of 2016. And my whole life changed when I was diagnosed and it's forever been changed since then. And over the next year and month, I received six rounds of radiation, uh, chemotherapy, radiation, three surgeries. Um, I had uh, seven lymph nodes removed. And I can remember going through the whole process like every three months of chemotherapy and just feeling so drained and feeling so weak and tired and and right when I was get, right when I was getting ready, like I felt like okay, I'm starting to feel normal. It was time to go back for the next round of chemotherapy. So it was an ongoing process of just all of these side effects and things that was made it difficult for me to be able to take care of my children. Um, I have two boys, um, and they were much younger at the time, but they're now 12 and 14. And um, so me and my husband of 16 years now, we, um, we always you know, did what we did as a team. And I thank God that I had him in my corner the whole time going through that because I was literally hardly not able to do anything. You know, when you have kids, it's, it's, it's a lot different, you know, getting them ready for school, cooking dinner, cleaning their clothes, giving them a bath that kind of thing, but my husband did it all. He did it all, taking me to appointments and keeping the house clean and cooking and, and all of that. So he's been my, my greatest supporter. Um, but I was, um, after I was finished with chemotherapy, radiation, I was still receiving her, uh, her suction. And I, was, I stopped receiving that the year 2017, and I would say July. And they told me, okay, you're good to go. And they recommend putting me on tamoxifen. And I took that for a little period of time. And then I was going about living my life. And I, I had so much enthusiasm and, and so much passion for life because I felt like I was given another chance, a second chance, if you will. And I approach life differently and I, I stayed fit, exercised, you know, enjoyed myself, did things that I dare not <laughs> thought I would ever do. And I'm in my living room exercising and I feel the knot where I had surgery and I'm thinking, oh, that's just scar tissue. You know, sometimes we feel things in our body and we're like, you know, that's nothing. That's just this, that's just that. And that's what I was telling myself because in my mind, in my heart, I'm like, God, I'm, I'm cancer free. I've, I've been rebooting and coming against that even when the doctor released me. And it was always subconsciously on my mind, you know, what if it come back? What if it come back? And I would say, no, that's fear talking. That's not faith talking. Um, but I realized that not just kept get, felt like it was just getting bigger and bigger. And I said, okay, God, what is this? I need to go get this check. And so I went to get a mammogram and they confirmed, of course, after they need a biopsy and all of that, that it was cancer again. 
And I'm like, okay, here we go again. Um, but this time it was not her too positive. This time it was triple negative. But and it was stage four this time. And so I'm like, okay, God, what is this about? And so immediately I'm thinking about my family. I don't have this this fear of death. But I'm thinking about my family. Who who's gonna help my husband? Who's gonna help take care of our children? Like that's all I'm thinking about. And so I go through this whole chemotherapy again, and I receive what they call the red devil. And I, I feel like every chemo treatment get worse than the first. And um, so that was hard, and it was very difficult to work due to that. And so now just in March this year, I had um, I had both breasts removed and I haven't decided if I want to do reconstruction or not because I'm, I'm like, when I tell you I'm over it, I'm over it. I know I'm a woman. My husband know I'm all women. So I'm like, we just, we just want this to be behind us. And, but I'm still undergoing chemotherapy and I'm receiving what they call Trudevi. And so far, the doctor has given me great reports saying that my body is responding very well to it, even though I've experienced hair loss and so many other things, headaches and bone pains and body aches and back pains. So, but God is still good. Um, I feel like God is strengthening me through it all. He's, he's holding me together. And um, a lot of people, love to tell me, oh, you're so strong. You've been through so much. No, nah, I'm grown because I have the one who is grown. And without him, I don't, I don't know. I, I thank God that I haven't even, I haven't even had the, you know, I've always had the courage to just face life head on and, and just believe by faith that our faith can be bigger than our problems and we can get through anything. You know, no matter what it is, I've always had that that mentality because I grew up in the church and I know the word of God. And I just always had that mentality. And I used to tell my husband all the time, still do, come what may. Because even before this whole council journey, I had the attitude that whatever we face in life, because we have the faith of Christ, we have the faith in Christ, we can overcome it. And either way, we win because we have the victory. And, and so I said, you know, I'm, I'm on Jesus' team. So I'm winning. I'm winning. And just this month, the doctor told me uh, two Fridays ago, matter of fact, that I'm now cancer free. And I'm like, praise God. <laughs> praise God. And so standing here cancer free, and I believe in doing whatever we need to do the practical, taking the practical step we need to take and, and being right, going to the doctor and doing all of that. But I believe nobody, nobody can hear you like God can. And nobody can keep you going and give you the courage to face whatever you have to face and strengthen you through it all the way God can. And so I think I thank God for his word that. I've always depended on and relied on and had faith in. And now the manifestation of his word is have, have, have been seen in my life by my family, my coworkers, my friends. And so I'm blessed to be here, still cancer free, still going through chemotherapy. But thank God that my body was responding well to it and they see no more cancer in my body. And so, yeah. So I, my only advice is, is, is to always, no matter what you're going through, no matter what the report is, good or bad, stand on the word of God. Amen. Stand on the word of God. Because with all these changes, with medicals and doctors and people telling you, oh, you shouldn't eat meat, or you should eat meat, or you shouldn't eat sugar, or you shouldn't do this, that. Look, the truth is, God knows our thing. And he know more than we know, because he says his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. So at the end of the day, while man trying to figure it out, I go to the one that I already know. Mm -hmm. And he brought me through it. And so my, my thing is just to trust in him 
and, and, and be led by the Holy Spirit on, on what to do concerning what's best for you and your body. And uh, thank God for all the support that I had. Um, also, um, I attend the uh, Harbor of Hope. Uh, it's a local birth cancer group here in Thoughtbridge, Georgia. I attend out once a month, um, the first Thursday of every month. And the women there, they, they are so powerful. They pray with you, they encourage you, they lift you up. And so I thank God for them as well. But that's my story. Jesus. I thank y'all for listening. Shakina, thank you so much. Mm. I mean, all the stories are powerful stories. They're not just stories, it's your life. It's more than a story. And I know that I've, I've seen you be strong and come in and work. And Shakina works with me at the school, at, uh, CCS in uh, Stockbridge. And that's how I met her. So she's one of the people that take care of our babies. And uh, she's now with the baby babies, the six week up to um, a year. They, they're walking by the time they leave out of there. But um, she's a powerful person uh, of God. And I just thank you for saying yes to the program today. You just don't know how that can touch lives of so many people. Yes. Um, so again, thank you again. So we're thank gonna you. go back to the, to the program and we'll come back with questions to the, to the rest of you guys in a few minutes. Um, at this time, uh, we're gonna have a scavenger hunt. So you're gonna get a chance to win a couple of prizes. And uh, Tamika, would you do the list for me? There you go. You have to look for these items and you're gonna have five minutes. And are we gonna have a timing clock, Tamika? What do we need to do? Um, yes, so at the start of it, um, the clock won't be there, but at the three minute mark, it'll pop up on the screen. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so you, you're looking for a breast cancer scarf, a tumbler, don't start yet. Something pink, <laughs> red lipstick, pink flower, and a breast cancer pen. So those are the five items. No, what is the six items you're looking for? So let us know when you're ready, Ms. Tamika, and we'll let them start. Um, yeah, we're ready now. So All right, ladies. <laughs> All right, so you have five minutes to go look, and um, and then I'll I'll have the the uh, the three minute timer up on the screen. In a few minutes. Okay, I'm so sorry. You want us in our homes to go look for these items? Yes. Okay. <laughs> five minutes. Five minutes. If you want to win a prize, we have yeah. prizes. And so if you if you find the items um, after the five minute mark and we all come back together, then you'll bring them back um, and be able to show them on the screen. Exactly. All right. I guess we'll make it clear, did we? <laughs> so we'll start the timer over. <laughs> okay. All right, here goes.
Okay. <laughs> Okay, ladies, the first two people that I saw were Gwen Landrum and Colada. Do we have anyone else? Unmute yourself. <laughs> uh, Brenda. Brenda, last name Brenda. Kennard Halsey. Kennard Halsey. Yes. Okay. Okay. Was there anyone else? You didn't find anything? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found two things. Okay. Okay, so Monica. Octavia, I put in chat when I finished. I was finished also. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was supposed to put it in the chat. Yeah. Well, I didn't know how they said do it either. So who was this now? Jean Ooh, Evans. Jean. Oh, Jean. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I we didn't say we were going to disqualify the club members, but we probably we should. Need. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> so I, I actually have um I, I can contribute to the prizes. I have a few breast cancer prizes from Avon I can give away. So we can have some subsequent have, winners. I have, third, I have a third place prize as well. So oh, good. We have okay. first place, and the first place will go to Gwen Landrum. Let's give her a hand. 
Wait, we gotta see the items. Yeah. Okay. okay. Brenda has the items that you're gonna okay. receive. Gwen is about to. Items, Gwen, Gwen is about to show. Yeah, she's Gwen about is, to show. So she has. Okay. I have a pink bandana. <laughs> I have red lipstick. Okay. I have my mom's red, a uh, pink headband, knit headband. I have a pink bottle of Johnson and Johnson lotion, and I have a pink vase with a pink flower in it that that says "You're a mom worth celebrating." <laughs> well, it looks as though she has everything, guys. Right? <laughs> Five minutes, when it took you to get that, huh? <laughs> All right. So, um, congratulations, Gwen. Lana was the next person. <laughs> Thank you. Galata. Oh, oh, okay. Who was the next person? Galata. Yes, I'm sorry. Here I am. Oh, okay, let okay. me spotlight you. Okay, so a scarf actually has pink ribbons on it. Okay. Uh, something pink, which is a pink cap. Okay. A pink water bottle. Oh, am I, okay. do I have it in the camera? <laughs> A, an actual pink ribbon, breast cancer ribbon. Okay. And a pink flower. Oh, and the lipstick. Mauvey pink, but <laughs> my lipstick. <laughs> okay. All right. And then I think the last person that uh, said she had items was Brenda. So we only had the first three people. Okay. Well, what I have is a Pink scarf has the ribbons on it. Can you see? Let's see. <laughs> there we go. That's okay. cute. Oh, that's nice. All right. And nice. I have a pink flower. Okay. A pink pin. Okay. Cancer pin. Yes. Cancer ribbon pin. Okay. Rhinestones, a little bling. <laughs> and the red lipstick. Okay, all right. I did not have a pink tumbler. <laughs> okay. All right, so I have first place was Gwen Landrum. Madam Chair. Was Collada. Okay. And the third place was uh, Brenda. And what you'll do is, uh, Put your information in the chat. You're recording this, right, Tamika? Yes. And they put it in the chat. We will be able to pull it from the chat. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, sounds good. So just put your information in the chat, and those items, uh, the the gift will be mailed to you. At... Was and I just have a question. Was Jean the only club sister that had items? Because I'm I'll send Jean an honorable mention gift. Were there any other club sisters? We have the club sisters with them. Okay. No? Okay, great. And okay, Madam, Jane, 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 Madam, Jane, Madam Evans. Chair, this, this is Gwen. I will forego first place for one of our guests, please. Well, then and that's that what I was going to say. I will uh, gently bow out for our guests as well. Well, that means that um, Brenda had, let's see, the Colada. Did Colada give us her items? Yes. Yeah, and that was Brenda, right? So I think Colada was second place. Did she she had all the items too, right? Yeah. Yes. And Brenda had all of them except one. So that would mean Colada would be in first place. And then um, Brenda in second place. Was there anybody else that found the items? Any other guests? Mom, do you have I only had two. Just the pink Who piece of paper. Now? But you had two. Monica Williams. Okay. All yeah, right. I only had two. All right. Well, that means Monica will be in third place. You said Monica Williams? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, you got to see him. Yep. The committee Monica, put your information in the that. chat. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. <laughs> Lipstick and paper. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all did good and for five did minutes. Excellent. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you for playing our game. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I, uh, this is AJ's thought, and she's not with us this evening because she had a family affair that she couldn't get out of. So again, we appreciate you guys for coming on. We're going to um, go to that question and answer period at this time. And um, you can put the questions in the chat and we'll try to, uh, my club sister is gonna help me monitor the chat to, for the uh, questions. Okay. Okay, so if there's any questions. Anybody have a question that you would like to ask any of our guests? And Lauren and I can try to spotlight okay. you or unmute you. Okay. Well, I had a couple if um, no one else has questions. I would like to know, Brenda, if there was a family history for you. Actually, no, it's not. Not for breast cancer. Uh, my mother's sister had some displeasure with her nipple, but it was not considered breast cancer. But uh, other than her and her daughter, uh, her daughter, uh, now her daughter did have breast cancer, but be just her, myself, and then I had a cousin that had colon cancer. And we kind of all found out that we had this all about around the same time, not many months apart. Also, Brenda, from the time that you were diagnosed to the time that you started your radiation, how long was that? Uh, my radiation lasted for over a month, about two months. But it was, uh, uh, I went every day. You know, I had to go every day. And um, after that, you know, I was, uh, I went to regular therapy, but I had the chemo first, then I had the surgery. Uh, after the, I did chemo for six months and then the surgery and then uh, the radiation. Were you so, on any oral medication, Brenda? I, I, actually I was taking Neuralex. I had to take Neuralex for a year after the treatment. So I finished that last November. So I've been off of that. This will be uh, one year since I was uh, taking any medication. So I'm not on any medication now. So hopefully this is, you know, I still go for my every three months examinations and uh, x-rays of need be, you know, I'm still under the doctor. But no, I'm not on any medication other than vitamins that I take. Uh, a vitamin D is the only thing that they have required me to take, but I do take vitamin D, vitamin B, um, fish oil or vitamin C. I don't do both, but one or the other. Okay, all right. Anyone else with any questions? Yes, I have, Mary. Mary Lester. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. I was I have a young sister, Smith. You have been such an inspiration today. And I made a special note that you said it was fear talking and not faith talking. And I shall keep that in my heart at all times. Thank you for that. My questions are, I need to know a little bit more about what they call the red devil. And if it's not too personal, how old are you and your children since you were that she had triple negative in May of 2016. That's only been six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. If it's I not do. too personal. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 not at all. I don't I'm the kind of person, look, I don't mind sharing my, my testimony with anybody. I let I let you know too much, my <laughs> <laughs> uh, I let you know too much sometimes, but, but I don't mind it because I this Praise life, God. we as human beings, you know, that's what that's what this life is about. You know, we we haven't had any human experience that not none of us can understand. All of us have had human experience where we can understand and have similarity in those experiences. So I don't mind saying it all. Um, but yeah, uh back in 2016. April, it, at first I had HER2 positive birth cancer. It started out as HER2 positive uh, birth cancer. And then 
just recently last year, it was triple negative. And so that answered that. Um, it's two, two different types of, of birth cancer. The first one was HER2 positive and I was stage two. And now, well, I was, praise God. <laughs> I was triple negative stage four. And matter of fact, during this stage four, during this time, it had spread to my lymph nodes and my lungs. Um, the first time it, it didn't spread at all, but this time, this time it spread to my, my limp nodes and my lungs. Um, the second, um, to answer your second question, um, my boys, well, I go ahead and answer that. My boys, they're 12 and 14 now. They're 12 and 14 now. So they was around eight and nine back then. And they, I think they, my my boys have autism, but they they understand they understood and they understand that mama going through something, you know, mm -hmm. and and I don't try to hide that from them at all, um, because I want them to know this is a part of life. This is what this is what knowing uh, what faith is like when when you are being tried and tested by you know difficult circumstances, and so. Um, yeah, so my boys, um, they're 12 and 14 now, but at the time they were like seven and nine and they, <laughs> they're, they're good kids. And, and my son, he'll come in here and I tell him, you pray for mama and he say, Jesus. <laughs> That's what they're praying, he just say, Jesus. He lift his hands and say, Jesus. <laughs> I say, well, Jesus is, is the best thing you can say in the name Amen. of our life. <laughs> Amen. Thank <laughs> and you. So, um, but the red devil, to answer your other question, the red devil is called, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but these medical words I've never been so good with, but it's called that, Dorotsu Robinson, um, and it's, it's a cancer medicine. It's a clear, I mean, like very bright red color. And it got its name, the Red Devil, because of how potent it is and how it, it, it just makes you feel so bad. Um, so that's why they call it the Red Devil. But um, it's, it's D as in dog, O-H-O-R-U-B-I-C-I-N. And so, but that, it, it, it causes, you know, a lot of side effects and things like that. And so, but it's, it makes you feel very bad. That's why I call it the red devil. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. I have, a, I have something that I'd like to say to everybody. Um, I know that, you know, our time is winding now, but you know, as you go through these treatments and it's rough, but more than that, we need to listen to the instructions that's given by your healthcare professionals. Because my, I went through 19 years of my husband having multiple myeloma. When you go through chemo, which is a poison, that's why that red devil makes you so sick. I didn't have that, but chemo itself, um, it is a poison that they're putting in your veins. Mm -hmm. You should not, I mean, you should listen to the directors. Don't be so closely around your children, your, your spouse you know, hugging them and kissing on them and all of that stuff for 48 hours after you take that, that drug. Mm -hmm. Because we know that cancer is nothing but the splitting of the cells, okay? We all have cells, that's what we're made up of. And when you get this, now, now I'm not saying that people call you to have cancer, that's not what I'm saying. But that chemical doing their sweat, their saliva, their uh, perspiration or whatever, uh, eating from them, which I did mm -hmm. all the time. You know, I'm cooking. I give him a bite off my spoon and, you know, we just carried on. You know, you're still sleeping together. You're washing your clothes together. You shouldn't do any of that for the first 48 hours. That stuff has to work itself out of your system because this is what causes your cells to split. And that, I believe, is why you get couples 
one will get it a couple of years later, a few months later, then the other one will be detected of having it. But nobody really knows how you how how you get it because of our environment, because of our lifestyle. You don't know. But the things that they tell you not to do, you really don't need to do those things. You can wait after 48 hours and you can carry on after that. But please. Because I did not know until I started my own treatment. And my son looked at me and he said, Mom, you didn't know that? I said, no, I never heard that. As many appointments that I had gone through with him had never heard that. But I do know that the, the medical um, establishment released information when they get it. I don't know when they discovered that. But I do know that it's not a good thing to do. I just want to throw that in, guys. Thank you, it's good to see my other BPW sisters from other clubs on today. Yes. <laughs> Anyone else with any more questions for our survivors? Okay. Well, thank you very much for making sure that um, you gave us the information, Brenda. One of the things that I would like to say before we wrap things up, there are certain things that you need to do and that you should do. We must stay informed. That means you need to read, you need to talk to people, you need to ask questions. And like Brenda said, when you go to the doctor, don't go by yourself, take somebody that you trust and that can hear what the doctor is saying to you. That's very important. And I found that out when I was going to the doctor with my mom, you know, sometimes they think they hear or they think they know when they really don't know. When you go back and you try to explain it to them the way the doctor had explained it to you, then they understand it a little bit better because you can put it in lay terms as opposed to the medical terms that the doctors are, are using. Do your monthly self-breast exam. Make sure you do that. Some of us do it in the shower, some do it on bed. You know, it just depends on where you normally would do it. And they always said do it right before the cycle and right after the cycle. So you can do either one if you're still having a cycle. But if you don't have a cycle, do it around the time you know that you would be having a cycle. And you can tell your body changes still, <laughs> you know. <laughs> also know your family history. A lot of us don't ask questions. We don't talk to our family members to, to ask questions. And um, that's very, very important because you have to know and you need to know. The One of the things that I do know for sure, and that was with the, the men in particular, if the grandmother or the mother, the aunts, any of those people in the family have had breast cancer, yes, sir, the men are just as likely to have cancer of the breast as the women are because it's genetically based. And from working as a lay patient navigator, that information has been shared over and over again. The other part of that is that when the family history is on the, on the mother's side of the family, that's when they're more prone to have the, the cancer cells. So that's one of the things that I, that I do know and I'm sharing that with you. So again, thank you for joining us. I want to have my committee say thank you as well, Brenda. <laughs> thank you for being a survivor and being part of the program. Pearly, another survivor. Pearly, we love you. We appreciate everything that you've said and done today. And of course, Shakina, I can't say enough about your bravery and all the things that you've shared with us. It's been I wouldn't say a delight hearing you because it's, it's, it's scary to hear those things and it's not pleasant to hear, but we need to know. And so again, um, this is the uh, committee that I have and I thank the ladies that joined us for this committee and to put this program together. Uh, Madam President, it's back in your hands at this time or Lauren and the membership persons. Thank you so much, uh, Chair Octavia, and um, 
Yeah, thank you for the even the information at the end there for sharing that. Um, I know that with all your years at Grady and just in the community that you have a lot of information um, that some people may think are little things, but you know, things that we need to know too. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, so um, it is Lauren's turn to discuss programming for just a bit. And then um, after that, we'll close up. And so let me share my screen so that Lauren can have the floor. Hello, everyone, and I hope you guys are having a great Sunday afternoon. Um, I am here to just go over the next couple programs. I want to first thank our chair, Octavia Taylor, for putting on a dynamic program today, as well as your committee. I want to thank our speakers, Shakina Smith, Ms. Pearly Robinson, and Ms. Brenda Gibson. You guys did an amazing job, and thank you for inspiring us and giving us um, just words of encouragement and things that we need to do to make sure that we all stay healthy um, and aware of breast cancer. Um, our upcoming programs are um, on Wednesday, we have an election expo. And so we ask you all to just come out and learn about the um, individuals that are on the Georgia ballot for our November 8th election. Um, even if you voted, uh, you can come out and just hear about the people that you voted for. We are partnering with Black Slate to talk about the Black leaders in our communities that are running for office. We also have a leadership program coming up on Sunday, November 13th at 3 p.m. Uh, this will be an in-person as well as a, or a hybrid event where you'll be able to join online as well as come in person uh, to hear about some leadership tips. And then we have an entrepreneurship program coming in December of 2022. So we encourage you to follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook. We are streaming live on Facebook and we also have um, all of our flyers and information posted on our Instagram, which is Metro ATL NANBPW. And um, you can keep up with our information there. I also want to shout out our Ohio members. I want to give my mother a definite kudos because she is a part of the Mommy Bay Club. So thank you, Mom, for inviting your club sisters and joining us as a sisterhood. We like to support each other. Um, we went to her Triple the Pink program on last week, and so they came out and supported us. So thank you. Thank you for joining us as well. Um, and that's all I have for today. We're going to turn it back over to Octavia to um, close us out for the evening. Thank you. So you're muted. Okay. Thank yeah. you again, First Vice President. We appreciate you so much, Lauren. And uh, we are excited that you thought it enough to invite your family from the other clubs as well, because that's family, that's your mom and, and, and those. So we appreciate them joining us. Also, um, Madam President, we're excited that you are part of our technology team. You did everything for us and I appreciate it so much. It made things a lot easier today. So again, thank you. And it did not go unnoticed. I, I, really appreciate that part of the program. At this time, I guess we're going to close everything out if there's nothing else from anyone else. Okay. Um, it cut off right at the yeah. end. He said, if, if there's nothing else, I'm Is sorry. Anything else from anyone at this time? I think, Shakina, were you saying something? Oh, I was just saying thank you. I'm sorry. I was just saying thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. And uh, may God be with you all, ladies, and his grace be upon, to you, uh, upon you, extended to you. And yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Thank, thank you. you. And Madam, Madam Chair, this is Gwen Landrum. May I speak? Yes. I, again, I'd like to thank on behalf of the membership committee, Nastasha Cockrell as the chair and uh, our committee, 
Uh, I'm Gwendolyn Landrum, the co-chair. And so I, uh, too, on behalf of the membership committee, would like to thank our guests for attending our program. And uh, I would totally be lost if we didn't invite you for membership. Any of you that are in the Atlanta area that have seen and heard what we're saying and see the kinds of programs that we have uh, scheduled for the upcoming year, we invite you to come be a part of us. Uh, our membership has closed for this year. We just brought in uh, five new members and we invite you to partner with us, attend all of our programs, talk to the person that invited you to this program, get to know a little bit about who we are and our mission and goals as the National Association of Negro Business and Professional Women. So that when our membership opens up in the May timeframe, then you'll be ready to join us. So we're extending that invitation today for the upcoming induction ceremony and joining program in May. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Madam um, Membership Co-Chair, Ms. Glenn Latham. We appreciate that. And we look forward to having all of our guests join us for any program that we are having on the platform. Now everything's back into the hands of our president, Madam Tamika. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You've done an amazing job, Sister Octavia and committee. I appreciate you all for um, all of your hard work. So good to see my TMAC sisters on here. So good to see my BPW sisters on here, all the way from Ohio. And so that's kind of the, um, the great thing about this virtual environment. I know there are a lot of you know, not so great things about it, but at least we do get to see your your beautiful faces from time to time. So we we certainly appreciate that. So thank you so much, um, Sister Pearlie and Brenda and Shekinah. I know we've we've seen you before. You are a friend of ours for sure. So it's good to see you again. Thank you for sharing your story again. Um, even though it was different this time, you know, you you still had some some um, encouraging words and 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 more to the story. So just looking forward um, to, to, to all that is to come for all of us and for all of you. So thank you again. Please have a wonderful evening and we will see you next time. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank you again. Committee, Bye. thank you. Love you guys. Love you, all of our speakers. Bye. All of our guests, thank you for joining thank us. Bye-bye.